Okay, guys. God bless you guys, and welcome to This Is It. This is it before the fire, guys. Um, so I want to check in. Listen, Dale, we're going to load up about a two-hour, 20-minute video that encompasses the get-together. Uh, uh, Dave the Waves uh, put all this together for you guys over the last two days. I'm still here uh, with these guys working on this stuff. But I want to... I want to do a short little standalone video right now where I talk to you guys and I, I want to give you a testimony and so you guys can hang on to your faith. First of all, everybody that showed up and all of those that wanted to show up, doesn't matter if you made it or not, I know a lot of people couldn't make it, that's okay. Um, this is a ministry that's all about faith, guys, and that's how you're made right with God. The Bible says, and Abraham believed God when he left when he left his, his land in search of a uh, heavenly kingdom, a kingdom made not with hands by, of men, and it was accredited him, to him as righteousness. Okay, guys, everything that the Lord's had me do, whether or not it's Grand Junction, whether or not it's the parachuting, V for vengeance, um, whether or not it's laying on hands of someone that's blind. Do you know? I mean, I don't know if you understand. When you step off and you lay hands on someone that's blind, if they're blind, and you laid hands on them, but nothing happens to them, then are you uh, are you really walking around with the power of the Most High in you? Well, that would be very questionable. Um, I had the Lord's had me lay hands on Lexi, Juan Longoria, my son Trinity, and these are all people that either were blind, uh, complete blindness in one eye. My son had to have surgery, and the Lord said, "No, stop the surgery." I'll take care of it. And my whole family turned against me. They freaked out. As a matter of fact, I've never heard my mom say the F-bomb so many times. Oh, it's just like, stop, mom. But of course, she was the wife of a doctor, and they were Catholic. And I said, no, when, I, when the Lord's communicated to me what to do, I do what he says. I step out on faith. Um, when the Lord has me lay hands on someone that's blind, um, it's... It kind of comes with some trepidation because if I lay hands on someone, I said, look, my whole body's buzzing and I'm going to lay hands on you right now because the Lord is here. I feel the Lord's presence. And I lay hands on him. In my world, it's kind of edgy because if nothing happens, then that would be a faith destroyer for me. Do you understand? So the video that y'all saw yesterday, y'all got to see Karen Sullivan with tubes up her nose. You got to see her where she looks like she is just at death's door. Okay, so when the Lord sent me here and he told me, I want you to lay hands on her after her husband, after she prayed with me and her husband uh, was converted because she, she was given an option. She could pray for whatever she wanted. The Lord told me whatever she asked for in faith with you in my name, I will do for her. I was in complete shock. I was like, I've never even heard of anything like that. So you're basically giving Karen Sullivan a blank check I've never even heard of that I mean in scripture I've never even heard of it like whatever you want obviously the Lord knew what she was gonna ask for um, so anyway so Karen Sullivan and if you just go back and watch yesterday's video she's the one with tubes up her nose and um she said I would like the salvation of my my son my husband my son and my nephew well, if you believe, and you, you, she was watching this ministry for years, she had seen the miracles. So, you know, if you're, you're sitting there with stage four cancer, what would most people probably do? Uh, hey, would you please lay hands on me? And the Lord would have healed her. But the Lord used her for a much, much, much greater purpose. And y'all are all intersecting that whole hemisphere now because... Look, Karen asked for the salvation of her husband, her son, and her nephew. Within a couple weeks, I was coming back here to baptize her husband in Trinity Bay. It's on the video. He's the guy that looked, and I lovingly refer him as Gandalf from the Scottish Army. Jim's a weapons guy, and he's, he's you know, it's, <laughs> he's got his stuff going on. But when the Lord converted him... Uh, it, it, he was just a new creation. I love the old gym and I love the new gym, but I'll tell you what, I really like seeing the new creation because that's uh, proof positive that there was an enormous change, even in his, his the way he dresses. I, his, all his hair got cut off. He shaved off his beard. Uh, 
you know, the the military uh, look went away. It, he just totally changed. It was phenomenal. And then he started being in the Bible all the time. It, it's just phenomenal. So anyway, so this this whole thing that's happened here at the Ark that y'all got to participate in was just a tremendous act of faith just to show up here. There were people that showed up here that this ministry has reached out to that needed surgery and they couldn't afford surgery and we took care of it for them. Um, there were just people that showed up, you know, wanting to have hands laid on them. The, the Lord had me lay hands on a, a small handful of people and uh, I've already gotten to see and hear some of the testimonies of people that are that have had some, you know, major, uh, uh, when I say healing, I want to say whatever it was that was their affliction is no longer there. Uh, one guy that was blind, the Lord told me lay hands on him. And, uh, and I laid hands on him and then the Lord told me what to whisper into his ear and he knows what that is. Um, so anyway, I'll be waiting to see where that goes. I don't know if we're even going to be here long enough to even see, <laughs> who knows. But anyway, this morning I got up. And this morning when I got up, I stood there in my hotel room and I looked out over the ocean over uh, Nassau uh, Bay and I just said, you know, Lord, I did everything you asked me to do. Uh, it's, it was an unbelievable effort on a lot of people's part. You know, just everybody put in a Herculean effort. It was unbelievable. And then the get together was, it was super amazing. Uh, for those of y'all that were there, just you could feel the, the spirit of the Lord just in the whole place. You could feel it was all about love. Love was, love was the theme. Love and faith was the theme. So this morning when I got up, I looked out the window. I know World War III has started. Now they're going to have their fall guy. Everything's ready to go. And I, I just prayed and I said, Lord, you know, I just first of all want to thank you for everything you've let me do. Um, I know you made certain promises to me for what I for what I would do. Uh, you, the night I got saved, you even promised me something, and you confirmed it before I came here on this on this endeavor. And so I was praying about that, and then I said, "Please, please, please, don't let me be here to watch what's coming on this world. I just don't want to see the suffering. I would rather much. There's a lot of things and a lot of ways I just assume." Uh, go from here than to have to watch the world suffer like the suffering that's coming on this world. So anyway, so right here, um, after my prayer and looking out and just speaking to the Lord, he told me once I had packed up my whole room, everything was packed up, I was getting ready to drive off and I had my Bible on my, on my front seat and I heard the Lord say, open your Bible. And so I did, and I've got it marked, and I want to read to you what he showed me because it incorporates all of y'all. It incorporates every one of you, every one of you that believe. You believe on faith. We're children of faith. Abraham's the father of us. He, we're children of Abraham because we're children of faith, not of the law. I, I can't stand legalism, and I see it. The church people, they're all about it. As a matter of fact, one young lady that was there, her husband, the one that called and I put on speakerphone for everyone to hear, Francisco, he was all about it. He was all about his little legalism. So anyway, so what I'm going to read to you, what the Lord showed me is so personal, it intersects on a personal level everything that he had me do. It intersects Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Shall the work say of him that made it? He made me not. Shall the thing that was framed say of him that framed it? He had no understanding. That's Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. So that verse right there is so personal to Jonathan Cleck because that was the verse he used to help me understand. Why is all this stuff upside down? Like, why when I turn the virgin upside down, it's a dead sheep? How come when I turn this Catholic prayer card upside down, it's the devil? You know, I was like, what is going on? And so he, he had me, uh, actually, he, uh, I went to flip a calendar page that had Bible scriptures on it. And I, op I flipped it, and the verse was Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. And that's when he showed me, it's right here in your Bible, son. And so now, imagine you're me. 
you're getting ready to leave. I think I've been here 11 days. <laughs> it's like it's, I've been coming here for the last month and a half to get this ready with all these guys and, and to prepare this get together and just so we could all meet and greet fellowship, everybody network a little bit, get to know each other, you know, get some names, get some numbers because we are heading into the very end of it. And I asked the Lord, would you please communicate to me that the end is at hand, that you're going you're gonna to wrap this up pretty quickly. That's what I asked. Let me read to you what he wrote. I mean, yeah, well, he did write it, so he did write the book. But this is what he showed me. Okay. Okay, so, also, before I read, I'll read it, I want to show you an understanding. In a set of twins, there's a right-side-up twin and an upside-down twin. The upside-down twin comes out first because his head's down. And so that one bursts first. And then the, the young, then the one that's, that's the oldest twin. Because he comes out first. So he's going to be 10 minutes older, whatever, than the second one. So now you're going to understand why the older will serve the younger. Esau came out first. Jacob came out second. And it says the older shall serve the younger. Do you know why? Because think of Genesis 1. The older, the original, shall serve the younger the Edemic race, Genesis 2. Do you understand? Because one come, one's first, and then the other one, the second one, is the one, like Jacob, he was converted. He wrestled with God as we all wrestle with God our whole lives. He wrestled with God, and then he got converted, and he became Yisrael, which means he will rule as El in you. Do you get it? That's why the older, the one that came out first, shall serve the younger. Do you get it? <laughs> it's mind-boggling. So here we go. Okay, so. For this is the word of promise. At that time I will come, and Sarah will have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also conceived by one, even our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. And it is written, Jacob I have loved, and Esau I have hated. I'm going to stop right there for a sec. Think about it. Loved and hate. Okay. And Esau I have hated. What shall we say then? Is, is there righteousness with God? Is there righteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Do you understand what he's saying? You don't get to choose. You don't will it. That Christianity where it's name it and claim it is nonsense. That's why I don't lay hands on everybody that's sick, because it's not my will. I don't get to go, oh yeah, everybody show up, I'm going to lay hands on everybody. No. The Lord picks and chooses. And here it is, right here. And that's what he did at the get-together. There were certain people that he wanted me to lay hands on for his glory and his purpose. Not, I would like to see everyone get healed. That would be my thing. I just like, I want everyone to show up. I lay hands on everybody. Everyone's going to get healed of their affliction. But that's not the way it works. It's right here. Listen. So it is not him that willeth nor him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh... Even for the same purpose I have, I have raised thee up, that my, I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore he hath mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will hardeneth, he hardeneth. Wilt thou, thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth that yet find fault? So do you understand what he's saying? Then why will you find fault in me? Because I was kind of doing a little bit of, Hey, Lord, you told me this, and I'm just... I just, you know, need to know what the, what my posi what my current disposition is on the immediate future. That was part of my prayer. So listen closely. Thou wilt say unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Not saying no one resists the will of the Lord. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I prayed it and I meant it. Whatever his will is. Nay, but, O man, who out there that repliest against God, shall the thing that is formed say of him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? 
For hath not the, the potter the power over the clay and of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Think about it. Here we go. Here we go. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto his glory? Do you understand what he's saying? He's like, in order to show his, his mercy, there has to be also an instrument of wrath. He prepares them both. Do you understand? Okay. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith also, O see, I will call them a pe my people, which were not my people, and her belev beloved, which was not my beloved. Do you know who that is? Do you see the bride of Christ? You see the bride of Christ container with all the birds flying away? Okay. And it shall come to pass in that place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as sand of the sea, only a remnant shall be saved. Think about that. So if you've received the, the understanding of being on the rock, being on the rock is this. You were turned down and you got turned up. That's what being on the rock is. That's Jesus said, upon this rock, I will found my church. Because you were head down and you got turned up and that proves you're saved. He knows, go. Now you know that you know that you know you're saved. That's why when that young lady's husband was yelling at me on the phone and I was letting y'all listen to it, I said, you know, do you even know what being on the rock is? Because he said, Mr. Cluck, you're not getting saved by your good works. And I said, I know that. By the way, they're not good works. These are miracles. But anyway, I don't expect ever to get saved by any good works. I, I was saved by faith. I walked through a door the night I got saved through faith. Even though I knew I'd probably die, I opened the door by faith. And everything else I've done, I did by faith. And the Lord God put me on the rock by turning me up. And I know what the rock is. Now wait, hold on to that. Because Jesus is the rock of offense. You know what the word offense means in the Bible? A trap, stick, bent sapling, a snare that turns you upside down. Hold on, here we go, get ready. As it is written, O see, I, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her my beloved which was not my beloved. And it shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said unto, unto them, You are not my people, there they shall be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also cries concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant shall be saved. You know what the back of that shipping container represents? With all the doves flying away, the remnant that shall be saved. That's what it represents. Now, keep listening. Here we go. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Because a short work the Lord will make upon the earth. Now he's answering the rest of my prayer. Lord, is this, I just need to know, I mean, I'm in it for the long haul no matter what. And he's saying now, I'm going to make a short work of this. I, and the Lord will make a short work upon the earth. And Isaiah said before, except the Lord of the Sabbath had, not left, had left us a seed, we had, had been as Sodom and Gomorrah. You know what saw, happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Fire. I'm the before the fire guy. What shall we say then that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness has, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, but Israel which followed after the law. See, Israel followed after the law. Legalism, it kills. Watch. But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? It says, wherefore, question mark. That means why. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith. Do you understand? Everyone that showed up, y'all showed up by faith. Do you remember me asking the crowd, why did you come here? Why are you here? Because you believe. So that was your act of faith showing up, guys. Good for you. And all those that couldn't make it, we know you wanted to be there, but faith is the key, guys. Why has Israel not obtained the promise? Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. 
for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So, for me, on a personal level, to have the Lord give this to me after my prayer, I'm the, I'm the rock of offense, guys. I, I mean, when I say I'm the rock of offense, I'm the guy that the Lord showed what the rock of offense was. The stumbling stone. You got inverted. That's the stumbling stone. And when you get turned up right, then you become clean. It shows that your vision's been restored and you've been made right with God. So for me, on a personal level, this scripture to be rolling out of here, and he's like, here you go. I want you to open the Bible. And to give me that, for me, that's just pure peace. So, now, I'm going to load this up. I don't have my bear with me on the next videos. I'll, I'll, I'll have my bear with me. And when I hug my bear, I'll be thinking of you guys. And you guys can say, hey, I got, you know, we, we got to have our hug together. All right, so now, Dave the Wave is going to load up a video. I've got a lot of stuff to do. I'm going to post this little video. And then Dave the Wave is going to load up the other video on, on this channel. And you guys can just watch two and a half hours of of faith. How cool. All right. I love you guys.